Hello, it's me again. What I'm going to do is go through a tutorial on how to solve this 4x4 supercube. Um, the main purpose of this, there's other 4x4 supercube tutorials that are out there that are excellent and do a very good job. What I wanted to do was go through the layer by layer method because that's actually the preferred method that I have. It's what I've always used and um, I'd really rather not learn new methods and new, stra new strategies. Part of the appeal to these puzzles is to try to work it out using all the strategies that I know, minimizing any new algorithms uh, in order to solve it. So the first thing I'm going to do is get my centers. I'm going to start off with green. Uh, so you've seen this before, but basically intuitively match up green sides. I'm going to match up the other green side. Here's green here and purple, find the other green and purple, which is up here. So this gets moved into position, down, across, and up, and just move it here. Now, if you just want to know how to do solve the parodies, you can skip ahead, but what I'm going to do is just kind of go through it step by step. So here's the first one. Now because this is a 4x4, four four, we have to define the centers. They're not defined for us. So white is going to be on this side. Let's do red. Just by convention, I've always done red next. So here's red and white, red and blue. The first center is always the easiest. That's lined up here. Go ahead and line up the other one and move it in. Here's the other red. Turn it here, turn it up, move it in, rotate and back. Just kind of get used to the process of moving in, rotating, and back. So, move this in, and we have our two centers. So we've got three centers so far, no biggie. Not reinventing the wheel here. Blue center, uh, whoop, next is the purple center. Purple is here. Match it up with a purple and white, which is here. Actually, I can just move this in because most of it's solved anyway. There. And then I can line these two up, and we're just making quick work of this. And move it into here. Okay, so now we're at the dreaded last two centers. This is actually where it needs to be, and this is where it needs to be. Whoops. No, none of them are where they need to be. So this needs to move my goodness, coordination is getting better as I get older, obviously. This needs to move up here, so it's easy enough to do that, and this blue side is solved. So I'm just going to do that. Move it up, rotate it, move it down. So this side is solved. Might as well coordinate it with everything else, leaving this last side here. So whenever I'm solving the last side, it's actually the last two sides together, is the configuration that I want is I want something like this where the bottom side or one of the sides are solved where it needs to be and the top side has variability of how it has to move. Then I'm looking for the next side either it's completely solved or one is in configuration because the algorithm that I'm going to use as you may recall from previous tutorials doesn't change these parts doesn't change this but will swap these two. So what's going to happen in the algorithm is is this comes up here, this comes down here, let me do that again, this comes up here, this comes down here, and this comes over here. Now that's all you know, you could try to work it out. But if you have a situation like this where just these two need to be flopped, you can just memorize something that you have to do to get it back. All you have to do is work it out to where you get it in this configuration and even if these two are messed up, as long as this is in configuration, we can solve each one one at a time. So I'm going to use this one. I'll move it down here. This is the configuration that I want when I want to swap these two sides. It's hard to see, but uh, this is actually orange and this is actually purple. Whoa, radical close-up. I'm sorry, red. This is actually red. Even without the camera, I can't tell. So my overall strategy is doing the algorithm will put this, this over here, and it doesn't matter, but this will come up here. It'll be replaced by that. What I'm then going to do is move it back here, and then I'm going to put it right back up to here. So it's going to flip-flop those two. And the algorithm is the same type of algorithm that you had when you switched these corners on a 3x3. Three 
we just had the U R U I uh, L I um, U R I U I L. I think that's what it is. Anyway, I'll, I'll write it down. But uh, just to demonstrate it, um, it's uh, instead of doing the U, you just start off with the uh, with the uh, R. So R U I um, L, and by, uh, we're just moving the middles here. U R I from the middle. U I, and then L from the middle. So uh, what that in effect did didn't change this, didn't change this, but it did move what was here down to here. Now I want to flip it back. So to flip it back, I'm going to put this, rotate this over to here. This will put this up here, and on doing that, it's going to put this. It's it's basically going to put this in the configuration that we want. It's going to put it up here. This is going to then appear down here, and this is going to be flipped over to here, which is what we're going to use to do some fancy footwork, because this will line this up to over here. So we do the algorithm again after we, what, basically what I did is I just flipped this over to here to bring it back up here to do the flip. So off we go. Okay. So what this in effect did, is it did flip-flop that. Now notice all these are solved save one and um, these are, we still have this over here. So I'm going to move this back here and move this twice over here so that with this, so this was down here, I moved it twice up here. So now this is going to be flipped up to here and effectively solve this side. This is going to come down here where the yellow and purple will be lined up to the, with the yellow here, and this will move over here and basically solve the two sides. And if you don't believe me, I barely believe it myself. And there it is. It solves these two middles. I want to demonstrate a, a situation of the last two centers where it didn't just work out so cleanly for me. Um, this is a, a, the red center and the two whites are lined up so this is fine this is where we need it to be but as you can see the top one or the, the blue one isn't like that so we have to use a little bit of strategy to get it where it needs to be to get it so that you have two so I want this to be paired with this because this both this this both has white so what I'm gonna actually do is I'm gonna use my algorithm to put this at a place where it's gonna coincide with this guy here so if, if I move this up here and I do the algorithm, this is going to come up here and be paired with this, and then I can kind of pick up where I left off. All right, so let's see what that did. This is good, and now you can see this is good. So I can move this down here and just kind of orient myself. These are both where they need to be. Um, so what has to happen here is if I wanted to pair things together, if I move this up here, it'll be paired appropriately with this guy. If I move this down here, this is going to move here, this is going to be associated with that, so I think it will actually give me my sides. Alright, so this solved this, this solved this, and these two are solved as well. So this is an example of what you could do using just the knowledge of how you can move things around to arrive at another solution. Now, so I'm just going to move this down to here. So this is solved and then this is solved. So it's just another way of dealing with those two centers by using some strategy with the same algorithm.